Well then, what do we do with this information we just received, brother? Run to Jesus. It is God who has what we need. The world doesn't have what we need. That's what I was thinking about when Brother Aaron was going through this. What, does, what can the world offer us? In the end, what does the world have to offer us? This, uh, this is a warning to those who are maybe sitting on the fence or maybe dabbling over here or dabbling over there. Wake up! Yeah. You can't dabble. If you're one who uh, maybe puts on a good show for the brother or for your friends or family, but hey, when nobody's looking, you got a little something back here for yourself that you're hanging on to from the world, you better get rid of it. Because you don't know. There's no guarantee when that's going to take over you. Maybe you felt like you've been pretty strong in, in this area over here, and you've been coming to, to church, and you've been showing up, and you've been doing what looks like all the good things on the outside, but you've just been dabbling. You don't know when that's going to overtake you. It's like there's a hill, and you got some stairs over about a mile down the road, but it's going to take you a while to get to it. But Satan says, hey, look, I got a bicycle for you. You just go right down the hill. I don't know. I think I was supposed to take the stairs. No, go ahead. It's okay. You jump on the bike, and next thing you know, you realize, hey, there's no brakes on this bike. And there's rocks with jagged edges down. He didn't tell me the whole truth. Yeah. See, that's how he is. He, oh, I'm, I'm going to help you out a little bit here. Give you a little help. He doesn't help you out. He never helps you out. Yeah. In the end, you find out he, whatever he... In, you thought he intended to help you out. He was holding back on you a little bit on the real, whole truth. He had twisted it just a little bit like he did in the garden. Just didn't give the whole truth. Makes it look appealing. You know, whenever it looks like it's easy, you should always question it. Whenever somebody says, hey, come to Jesus, is this going to get easier from here on out? You should say, wait a minute. That's not what the Word of God says. That's not what my brethren, Paul, all the godly men in the world that I read about, it didn't get easier for them, did it? Could you imagine Paul saying, hmm, maybe I shouldn't give up being a Pharisee just yet. Maybe I should convert some of my brethren over here before I give up all the goodies. No, he gave it up. When he saw the truth, he gave it up. And he get and he get he full because, but you know why? Because God, because uh, Paul, he really was a man of God, yeah. who that when he came to the truth, he gave up what he knew was wrong. And see, this is where we come to this conclusion here. Whatever we see is true and right and holy. This is what we embrace. Those other things, we, we got to let it go. Lies can devour a person that's sloppy. Someone who's sloppy and just not even all awake, just kind of half-hearted, sleepy. A lie could devour them. We want to be alert. We want to be able to see what the Lord is doing. Stay close enough to the Lord and far, far enough from the world that we can see this. Because Satan... He's not, gonna, he's not out to help you. He's out to hurt you. Mm -hmm. But the Lord is out to help you. Amen. God tells us the whole truth. Can you stop once you get started down a slippery slope? You can't. You can't do it. God sent us a Savior because we needed one, Brother Aaron said. He doesn't do anything that's not needed. Yeah. Whatever God's doing, even if you may not, maybe you're at a point where you're not seeing everything clearly. Just know this, that God will not do anything that's going to hurt you in the end. Know this, that God is always right, and He's always perfect, and everything He does is for a purpose, and it's never just because there's nothing else better to do. 
He's got a purpose for everything that he does. Colossians 3, 2 says, Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Where is the line? Well, we don't even want to get close to the line. We don't even want to come close to dabble with the line. Get away from the line. Get close to God. We must not only see that God is the one who can help us, but God is the one who will will maintain what He has given us. We must maintain what we... Do we have the resources to maintain what God has given us? God will not leave us short. He will give us the resources that we are needed. But not when you're dabbling in the world. You're not going to be given the resources if you're dabbling in the world. We must be focused and aggressive. Nothing about Jesus is casual. That's what I received from Brother Aaron's preaching this morning. And needing God is not an option. We do need God. We are in a condemned world. The world is cannot and will not help you. The sooner you let the world go, the better. There cannot be a sooner time than right here and right now to let go of whatever you have of the world. Let it go. If we refuse to let go of the world, God shall send a strong delusion. He will send a strong delusion. That they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. 2 Thessalonians 12, 2.12 We don't know where that line is. We just know we want to get far away from it. Amen. Amen. So I exhort you brethren. Not to dabble. But to give our lives. Our lives. Wholeheartedly. To Lord Jesus Christ. I open it up to you now for comments.